Well, NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg says there is an urgent need to step up arms deliveries to Ukraine, but warned it will also take time for Kyiv's forces to learn how to use these modernized heavy weapons. Western nations have sent supplies of arms into Ukraine to help it fight Moscow. But Kyiv claims it has only received a fraction of what it needs. NATO members are meeting in Brussels to discuss Ukraine's desperate pleas for more hardware as it struggles to push back Russia's advances. Are stepping up its airstrikes, Moscow claims have destroyed a NATO weapons depot in Ukraine's western Lviv region. In besieged Severodonetsk, Russia claims Ukraine has disrupted plans for a humanitarian corridor. Hundreds of civilians and Ukrainian forces are holding, holding up uh, at a, a Azot chemical plant. Moscow has urged them to lay down their weapons and surrender, and ultimatum largely ignored. The factory has become a major flashpoint of the escalating conflict in Ukraine's east. The Luhansk governor says it's getting harder to hold on to that city, which is now mostly under Russian control. And for more on this, uh, David Villa joins us live from Lviv. Uh, David. Russia has accused Ukraine of preventing the evacuation of civilians in Severodonetsk. What exactly is happening on the ground? Is it actually safe for people to leave the area? Well, it's certainly no longer safe, and it's still questionable whether it was safe to begin with. The spokesperson for the separatist forces there and, and Russian military officials said today that as soon as the corridor opened, Ukraine started shelling it. Now, there are 550 civilians inside of this plant, roughly 40 children, and they were supposed to be brought north to Svatovo. That was Russia's offer yesterday, and they said it was in response to a Ukrainian request for a humanitarian corridor. Now, the self-proclaimed Luhansk People's Republic, they said that only one elderly man made it out before Ukraine started shelling it. But it's not really clear if Ukraine actually did shell it or why it would do so. It is said in the past that it needs security guarantees before any evacuation could take place. Now, Russia had, laid, had made conditions or asked for conditions that in order for this humanitarian corridor to open, the Ukrainian soldiers in the plant would need to lay down their arms and wave white flags. Governor of Luhansk province, he said, he, sorry, he refused to comment on what exactly happened there. But he did say that fierce fighting in Severodonetsk is still ongoing. And he said that Ukrainian forces are outmanned and outgunned. President Zelensky, he said that the fighting in that eastern Donbass region is very, very important to, to, to indicate who is going to dominate in coming weeks. Because the more troops that Russia loses, the less able it will be to continue its aggression. Uh, thanks for that. David Biller speaking to us there from Lviv. Well, senior Ukrainian officials are planning to meet with Western defense ministers, hoping to get even more military hardware to help them push Russian forces out of their country. So what do they already have and what more do they want? CNA's Oteli Edwards shows us. Edwards, pardon me. Western nations have sent billions of dollars worth of military hardware to Ukraine, with shipments starting even before Russia invaded nearly four months ago. But top officials in the embattled nation say they've only received 10 percent of what they've asked for. And to end the war, they need heavy weapons parity. The Financial Times looked at the wish list using information from the Ukrainian government and the open source intelligence defense analysis site, Oryx. Right now, Ukrainian forces have about 270 tanks. Military chiefs want to almost double that, 500. They have more than 50 multiple rocket launch systems, or MLRS. They say they need 300 to stand up against the Russians. Then there are those big guns I mentioned, howitzers. Ukraine currently has more than 250, but senior officials say they need four times that, 1,000. As for the other hardware that could help even the playing field, the Ukrainians want 1,000 drones to target Russian convoys and positions. And they want 2,000 armored vehicles. The country's commander-in-chief has been pleading with the U.S. for more and faster deliveries of military aid. He says they've been holding their positions despite everything. But the question is, without fresh supplies and a fair fight with the Russians, how much longer can they do that? Oteli Edwards, CNA.